Hmm. What's the funniest white lie you've ever told someone? Let me know in the comments. This is a white lie. We're going to talk about it today. Yep. What's up, my friends? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're making the seal back, a cocktail with what a lot of people call a controversial history. <laughs> I personally prefer a badass story because it's probably the coolest story behind the creation and the success of a cocktail. That wouldn't mean much and I wouldn't be talking about it if the cocktail itself was not good. And believe me when I say this one is excellent. So the video today is going to be pretty straightforward, a little bit on the history, the cocktail itself, and we're going to delight ourselves. So if you guys are ready, let's make the seal back together right now. The Sealback Cocktail was brought to the world by Adam Seeger in 1995 at the Sealback Hotel in Louisville, Kentucky. And because he was a bartender without a huge reputation, because he wanted to make a name for himself, he thought why not go by the words of Mark Twain, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. And boy, he built up a pretty awesome one around the creation and the history of the Sealback. Seeger's narrative was that when he took over the bar program of the hotel, he would have found an old dusty cocktail menu with the seal back on it and a little story explaining the creation of the cocktail. Apparently one day, to catch the spilling of an overflowing bottle of champagne, a bartender or a guest caught it with his Manhattan and that's what would have sparked the idea of the seal back cocktail. So he put the cocktail on the bar menu, made it the signature drink of the hotel and that's the story he kept on telling to anyone who wanted to hear about it. The story would probably have ended there if a local news paper wouldn't have picked up on the story and made it a bigger story than the lie itself. Because at that time, Gary and Marty Regan were writing their book, The New Classic Cocktails, and they were looking for new recipes and they heard about the seal bag because of the newspaper article. So they reached to Seeger to ask the full recipe because all that was known was just a couple of ingredients. And he actually agreed on giving the recipe for the book. And then it really became popular to a point where it became a classic drink. But the guilt led Seeger many years later to confess and he told the New York Times that this was a complete lie and he completely made that up just to make the cocktail popular. And it actually worked. It's now a modern classic. But for me, the only real reason why it did work, it's not because of the lie and the story. It's because it's a great cocktail, extremely simple to make. So what you're going to need to make it is bourbon, orange liqueur, Angostura bitters, facial bitters and sparkling wine. In terms of orange liquor, Seeger's specifically calls for Cointreau and of course that makes a great drink, but I personally tried many different orange liqueurs and I must say that my favorite one for this cocktail is the Dry Curacao by Pierre Ferrand. But it worked out with all the orange liqueurs I tried. It was fantastic with Grand Marnier, great with Cointreau or any quality triple sec. Really at that point it's just a matter of preferences or simply of what you have in your pantry. In terms of sparkling wine, the recipe calls for for champagne, if you don't want to invest in champagne for your cocktail, I recommend you go with a dry or a brute cava rather than a prosecco. The grape varietals just works better in the flavor spectrum of the cocktail, in my opinion. So now let's build. A lot of people will build this cocktail right into the glass, but I think it really needs a quick stir for dilution, but mostly to chill the cocktail down. It makes it so much better. So I highly recommend you do that and also make sure your sparkling wine is nice and cold. So we're gonna start with one ounce or 30 ml of bourbon in our mixing glass, followed by half an ounce or 50 ml of orange liqueur. Now, in terms of the bitters, the classic recipe, Seeger's recipe, called for seven dashes of Angostura and seven dashes of Patience bitters. For me, it's a little bit heavy-handed, but I realized that seven dashes of each using a Japanese dasher bottle makes it perfect. I don't know if Seeger's were actually using those when he wrote down the recipe. It could be it, or maybe not, I don't know. But what I can tell you is if you're using your bitters by the bottle, go with three dashes of each. And if you're using small Japanese dasher bottles like I am, go with six or seven dashes. So we're gonna go with the angle first. And then some pixels. Next, we're gonna fill our mixing glass with ice and stir it only for 10 to 15 seconds. We're 
gonna strain it in our chilled champagne glass. Top it with four ounces of the sparkling wine. The recipe simply says to top the cocktail with champagne. So I tried it with three, four, and five ounces. Three is too sweet, five is too dry, four is perfect. Then for the garnish, we're gonna express orange zest over the cocktail and garnish the drink with the zest. But I am personally gonna use my orange aroma that I've made in a video before. I'm gonna link the video up here. So I'm gonna do two spray of my orange aroma. And there you have it, the seal back cocktail. Cheers. Hmm, this is such a wonderful cocktail. And the reason why I wanted to make this video today, it's simply because, well, I've been having this cocktail for a couple of weeks straight now because it's super hot outside. And when it is, I always feel for something refreshing, but not always for something fruity or for something sweet, like a spritz, for example. So for me, this is the perfect cocktail when it happens. It's refreshing, bubbly, light, and dry. It's basically a light orange old fashioned topped with champagne just a perfect combination. So I love it. I hope you're gonna love it too. My friends, this is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel before you go to turn that bell if you wanna make sure not to miss the next one. Until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day and see you very soon. Cheers.